Hello everybody, Briars here. I hope you like my cataphrag. But today I am not going to talk about my cataphrag. I'm going to talk about the pilot skill tree system. The skill tree is basically the most controversial change to Bank Aura Online and it dropped in 2017, replacing the old pilot skill system. The purpose of this skill tree is quite good and I must say straight off that I like it, I'm a big fan of it. It allows you to customize your mech to suit your personal needs, but admittedly it is complicated and complex and it will take some time to get used to it. For the purpose of this video, I will share with you some templates that you can use when you customize your skill tree and it will help you ease into the game a bit easier. So that's because after using skill tree for a few months, I realized that I have more or less settled into certain set patterns and I thought I'll share those with you guys. So firstly, what is the skill tree? The skill tree can be accessed through MacLab and skills on the left. The skill tree is basically a combination of seven separate skill trees and they are the firepower skill tree for enhancing your weapons, survival skill tree for making your mech a bit harder and sturdier, mobility skill tree to basically enhance your ability to turn, excel and decelerate, jump jets for, well, your jump jets. Operations is, well, to help you with things like ability to have a higher kit capacity, cool down faster. The last two would be the sensor skill tree to enhance targeting. And the last one is the auxiliary skill tree to basically enhance your consumables like cool shots, artillery and UAV. As you can see by this page, it is very daunting. I imagine first time players or beginning players will find it very scary. And returning players will go like, what? 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 What's this? So as I mentioned before, I realized uh, each skill tree, after a while, I've set into a certain, come into a certain set pattern, and this will be shared with you guys for you guys to use and customize your mech. Firstly, how do you actually use skill points? You have actually 239 of these nodes. These are called nodes, but you can only have 91 active. So that requires you to plan ahead, and before you even plan them. I recommend you think about what you want your Mac to do. I call that design intent. And go to the online planner. For example, I use a Kitlens planner. The link is in the description below. So after coming up with the design intent, what I want to do with the Mac, I go to Kitlens planner and I plan the skills for my Mac even before I get a single skill point. And when I start getting skill points, I will sync them in knowing exactly where I want to put them. So yep, Kitlens planner is very important to me. Please. Check it out and use it to plan your mix. You can even save links or images, so it's a really useful planner. So for this video, I'll also use a cataphrag in case I need to. And this is my brawler cataphrag. I hope you like it. If you're interested, the build is here. And yeah, let's get down to the skill tree. Okay, so let's get down to the skill tree templates that I mentioned I would be sharing. So firstly, we have the firepower skill tree, and this is what I call the basic allocation. For 13 SPs, you get a cooldown bonus of minus 3%, heat of minus 3, and a range of 5%. So minor bonuses, but 13 SPs. If you want to get more heat and cooldown bonuses, I recommend 23 SPs by going down to the left a bit more. This will give you a cooldown bonus of minus 4.5%, heat of minus 7.5%, and a range of 7%. However, if you want to focus on even more heat and cooldown, I will recommend 29 SPs. This one gives you a bonus of 6% for cooldown, 9% for heat, and a range of 9% in terms of bonuses. If you want even more, in fact this is my strongest recommendation for firepower, that's 35 skill points and this nice symmetrical shape. This will give you a cooldown of 9%, range of 9%, and a heat generation of 10.5%, all listed here. So this is my strongest recommendation for the firepower skill tree. Next, if you want to allocate even more for heat and cooldown, you can get 38 SPs. That will give you a cooldown of 10.5, heat generation of minus 10.5 and a range boost of 10%. And if you want even more cooldown, you can go down the center. There are two more cooldown nodes here, but I tend not to get them because I feel 38 SPs is quite a lot. However, if heat is not a concern of yours, you want to go for range and cooldown, like maybe gauze builds, for example, this is what I recommend. 
and this template here will give you a cooldown of 10.5%, heat of only minus 1.5 because that's not your focus, but a massive 13% range bonus, really useful for gauze builds, and by the way, it even gives you a magazine capacity of 1, so it gives you a bit more ammo if, if you're running range builds like Daka or gauze, stuff like that. Anyway, let's go on to the next skill tree, that is survival. Survival skill tree is the easiest to remember because on the left is mainly armor and on the right side is structure. So for 16 SPs, you can go for armor bonuses. And by the way, armor and structure bonuses do differ by the weight class. So for example, lights have higher bonuses while assaults have slightly lower bonuses. So for a heavy mech, if you spend 16 SPs, for example, a heavy mech would have an armor bonus of 12.8%. Structure or bonus of only 3.1 and on a side note you get fall damage of 30% and 4% bonus chance of receiving less hit by crits. And if you want to support survival by going on structure, that's 15 SPs on the right. This will give you a bonus of 24.8% structure for heavy max and fall of 20% with a minus 5% crit chance. At this point, I will say these structure and armor bonuses are above and beyond your quirks. So if you have armor or structure quirks, this percentage bonus will multiply them. So really useful if you have armor and structure quirks. And lastly, if you want to max out your armor, go for this skill tree. That's 33 SPs for this allocation, maxing out armor and structure, and only leaving the AMS overload nodes untouched. This gives you a net bonus for a heavy mech of 16% for armor, 31% for structure, and minus 8% crit chance receiving. So really, really tough when you have 33 SP allocation. And you even have a fall damage of minus 50% if you really need it. Moving along, we have the mobility skill tree. Really useful for players like me who tend to move around a lot. For 10 SPs, I call this the basic XL D cell package. This gives you an acceleration of 21%, deceleration of 10.5%, and a small turn rate bonus of 5%. So if you want more turn rate, like which is what I normally do, you can go for 15% turn rate, and this is my strongest recommendation for mobility, especially if you play medium or light max. This is what I typically use the most often. And for these 14 SPs, I get acceleration of 21%, deceleration of 14% and a substantial turn rate bonus of 15% with a bit of torso yaw angle. So this is really good for turning and moving around the battlefield. However, if you have more SPs, you can go for 16 SPs. This will give you XL D cell of 2114, same as the previous two bonuses, the previous two templates rather, but a substantial turn rate bonus of 20%. And by the way, I do not get speed tweak that's further down the skill tree for mobility. That's because I feel it's really not worth it. Minor bonuses and they're all below. And you can actually live without like 1.5% speed bonus. Come on, you can live without it, right? So save those SPs, allocate them elsewhere. You don't need speed tweak. So after mobility, we move on to jump jets. And I'm a big non-fan of jump jets. I think it's so not worth it. Because you don't need to enhance your jump capability. They are pretty okay, but that's my style. Some people really, really love their jump capabilities, so you can always spend more here. But I don't recommend spending on jump jets because whatever you enhance here, you could have enhanced something else like heat generation, which is really useful. So let's move on, let's move on. Yep, yep, go away. So now we have operations. For 5 SPs, you can get this minor allocation here. And this gives you a heat capacity bonus of 6%, which is not bad. This is really useful. Heat, max heat, also known as heat containment. So it allows you to up your heat capacity, in this case, by 6%. So you can fire more without having to worry about shutting down. And I must mention, I'm a big fan of improved gyros. These two here, in this case. Because improved gyros basically is screen shake bonus, in this case, of 35% for two nodes. This basically allows you to reduce your screen shaking when you take fire. And many people play like Daka builds basically to make your screen shake to rattle you. So this gives you a 35 bonus to fight against that. All this with a set little startup bonus of 7% in this case. So that's for this template. If you get more skill points, you can allocate 13 for operations. 
and this is my strongest recommendation for the skill tree of operations because this gives you a maximum heat capacity of 15% which is my objective in this template allowing you to have up to 15% more heat before you need to shut down really useful and when you shut down you can start up 21% faster and all this with a screen shake bonus of 52.5% very substantial so if you're going to FaceTime the enemy and you're going to like screen shake you with Dhaka this 52.5% bonus will really help and you get a little 10% hill climb bonus because well it's there and it's useful allowing you to climb hills just a little bit better and the last skill tree we have is auxiliary this I am a big fan of auxiliary and by spending 6 SPs on the right, which is my strongest recommendation for these 6 SPs, you can basically get 50% extra shells, 50% duration for those shells, blasting the enemy longer, with a tighter spread of 20%. All this with 2 extra consumable slots for a total of 3, you can have 3 slots, and a capacity of plus 1. So out of these 3 slots, 2 extra slots, or rather 2 of these 3 can be strategic strikes. That's basically the term for airstrikes or artillery. However, if you're not a big fan of strategic strikes, you don't care about it, you rather have cool shots, I recommend the center of this skill tree. Also 6 SPs, this will give you a 30% enhanced cool shot, but it also gives you, because of this note here, 25% duration for your shells and 25% number of shells for any strategic strike that you carry. And because you have plus 2 consumables for a total of 3 and a capacity of 2 cool shots, you can run 3 consumables, 2 of them are cool shots, and 1 artillery. So that's another one if you want to go for cool shot. But if you have enough SPs, I strongly recommend 10 SPs in the auxiliary tree. This will give you strategic strikes and cool shots, combining the bonuses from the previous 2. So this gives you a total bonus of... 30% cool shot capacity, or rather 30% enhanced cool shot, cooling down faster, 50% number of shells, lasting 50% longer, and 20% spread for your strategic strikes. And this allows you to carry a total of 4 consumables, that's plus 3, 1 plus 3 is 4, 2 of them are cool shots, 2 of them are strategic strikes, allowing you to fight longer with cool shots and blast the enemy with lots and lots of artillery or air strikes. So those are the skill tree templates that I use. So let's get back to the client and my cataphrac. Okay, so here I am back in the client with my cataphrac. So as I mentioned before, those were the templates that I use on my Max. And please feel free to share them. And of course, please feel free to share this video with your buddies. And I hope it helps you. If you have any other suggestions or advice, please feel free to comment in the comment section below. But for the last part of this video, I would like to talk about how to allocate those skill points as and when you earn them. So let's get down to the skill tree yet again. So when you get your first skill points, I recommend you put them in auxiliary to get those six skill points here to get the artillery because that will give you a very fast bonus to your firepower and basically help you a lot. If you want to get cool shots, get this first. So in summary, the auxiliary skill tree is my first recommendation to allocate your beginning skill points. After you've done your auxiliary skills, you can go on to survival because that will make you last longer on the battlefield and that's always useful. This will be followed by operations thirdly. This will allow you to basically have enhanced heat containment, stuff like that, allowing you to run your mechs a bit hotter and better on the battlefield. After that, it's up to you. So those, that's how, basically how I would allocate skill points. Firstly, auxiliary. Secondly, survival. Thirdly, operations. And then finally, it's up to you. So that is basically my take on the skill tree and some templates that I have shared with you guys. So do give the skill tree a chance. If you don't like it, follow my templates first until you get a hang of it. Of course, you don't have to follow them strictly. You can always modify them. There's lots I didn't touch like uh, UAC jam chance or rather it's called UN, UAC jam duration now. Um, things like weapon velocity, which is of course useful. So anyway, enjoy yourself out there. This is Bryo signing off. I will hope to see you guys on the battlefield.